Good evening. It's 7 o'clock and we have two meetings tonight, the Cunningham Town Board first and then that will be followed by the Urbana City Council. I'd like to call the meeting of the Cunningham Town Board to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Ammons. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Mr. Madigan. Here. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Smite. Here. Ms. Marlin. Here. Mayor Preston. Here. Is there anyone who would like to address the town board? Okay. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting, February 1st, 2016. Anybody looked at the minutes? I'll move their approval. Second. Okay. Motion by Robert, seconded by Ammons. Any additions or corrections? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Committee to verify bills. Uh, Michelle Mayall. March bills that include February interim is town fund is $69,225.83. General assistance fund is $15,992.77. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the town fund and the general assistant fund. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, motion by Robert, seconded by Marlin. Any discussion? Questions for Michelle? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Reports of officers. No report? Got a report from the assessor? Okay. Um, Unfinished business, new business, approval of the agenda for the annual town meeting. Michelle? The annual town meeting is the second Tuesday in April of every year and the agenda has to be approved beforehand. So everyone was sent that in their packet mm -hmm. and it needs to be approved by the board. Second. Okay, motion by Smythe, seconded by Ammons. Any discussion? I had a question. Um, uh, Diane. Can you remind me again, we have an advisory question on this agenda, which is should the state of Illinois legalize and regulate the sale and use of marijuana in a similar fashion as the state of Colorado? Um, can you just let me know where, where that originated and how, how does a vote like this take place? It you would have to ask Wendy. It was given to her. It was just uh, a question that was filed by residents. I have a copy if you would like to see that. Okay, so it was filed by residents. And then is this voted on by the attendees at the meeting? At the meeting. Right, okay. at the that's annual. correct. And so is it a majority, the majority approve it at the meeting then? It right. Is simple, simple majority, right? Does Correct. it go on a ballot or does it? Yes, it would go on the ballot as an advisory question. Okay. All right. Anything else? Thank you. I got one more question. Yes, go ahead. And then, Wendy, uh, <coughs> uh, how many um, signatures was there a petition uh, filed to accommodate this uh, question to be on the ballot? There is a requirement of 15, and we have 18. So it's not so, so difficult to place something on the ballot? Correct. Okay, thank you. Well, it requires the vote of the town board at the meeting yeah but, but as far to, as to, to, initiate, it, to yeah. initiate a question that's right. not a difficult thing anyone else yes mike madigan so regarding this question um that is uh i i would assume then if if it were to pass it would be advisory in nature to the state it says it's an advisory question right so how then is that conveyed to the state I do not have an answer for you. I think you just tell your elected representatives. You could send it to whoever you want. So we just we send the uh, General Assembly or the governor's office uh, <laughs> some kind of uh, l official letter or something? Oh, actually, once it gets passed, then we will have to file that with the county. To the put it on the ballot. To, to put, put it, it on, on the ballot, ballot. correct. It has, to, it has to go through the step of the town board first, and then it would have to be approved by the voters in the election. Right. No, I was assuming that. So if it passes from by the voters, then we send some kind of official notification to 
someone. I mean, I, I'm, it'll be picked up by the news media, I'm sure, whichever way it goes. Okay. But you know, we could notify the the president of the Senate, the president, you know, the speaker of the House. I just the assume governor. there'd be some. Kind I don't of think you have to process. mail. I have never heard of a formal process, but maybe there is one. We'll research it. Right. I was think. I mean, I'm sure Wendy will be talking to Phyllis, and the whole annual town meeting and the agenda and everything is handled by the town clerk. I have nothing to do with this, so normally Phyllis would, you know, be answering all the questions. So I think Wendy, if she could. You know, give her a buzz and answer your question. She could okay. just shoot out yeah. an email, or an, it's and, you know, yeah. not like she doesn't know. It's not her <laughs> position. Not trying to make this difficult. I was just no, I know. Trying to I'm just figure out what the process was. Right, which Phyllis would probably have a better idea than anybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. We did vote. Did we vote on that yet or not? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. That motion carries. All right. Um, closed and open sessions to consider. Pending litigation pursuing to the Open Meetings Act, 5 ILCS 122C11. Is there a motion? Thank you. Mr. Grosser, would, do you need a closed session? We do not need a closed session. I can give you an update in open session since the update is a matter of public record. Uh, about two weeks ago, the Illinois Attorney General, on behalf of the state and the Illinois Department of Revenue, filed a motion in the appellate court asking them to stay the enforcement of their judgment of January. Shortly after that, the uh, Carl filed a motion seeking a stay. We filed memoranda on each of those motions opposing the stay. Last Monday, the appellate court denied both of their motions. Last Friday, uh, Carl filed what it called an emergency motion in the Illinois Supreme Court seeking a stay of enforcement of the judgment. On Saturday, I filed by mailing an objection, a memorandum objection to it uh, in the Illinois Supreme Court. So at this point, we're waiting for the Illinois Supreme Court's decision as to whether they will stay the effect uh, and enforcement of the appellate court decision pending appeal. Both Carl and the Attorney General are appealing that case to the Illinois Supreme Court. Is there a time limit on when this decision has to be made? By the Supreme Court? Yes. No. Uh, no reason to think it will take them but a few days, but there is no time limit. Okay, because they could mess up the county clerk's work if it was too late, right? Well, at this point in time, there is no stay. Okay. So people are acting in accordance with <coughs> that because that's the law at this point in time. Mike? So just to follow up on that um, with regard to timing, so let's assume... Uh, that the Supreme Court does uh, side with Carl. What does that do uh, in terms of the levy? Well, the levy was made last December, so it has nothing to do with the levy. Uh, it would affect the extension, which is what the county clerk does, and that results, that's what determines the tax rate. So uh, what effect it has, if any, if the Supreme Court granted a stay, would depend on when they did it. Let's say, for example, that they rule tomorrow. If they deny it, then everything is as it is today. If they were to grant it, um, then the hospitals would not be included uh, in uh, the calculations for the extension. You'd have the same levy, but you wouldn't have a lowering of the tax rate because the hospital's taxes wouldn't be included. Uh, depending upon what happened in the Supreme Court, uh, the, if the Supreme Court affirmed the appellate court, uh, then we'd be after the taxes uh, from 
Carl and presents for this year. The effect of that would be to, for the one year, increase uh, the receipts, the revenue. Um, and that's a, a one year thing, is by next year, uh, it will be back to a normal situation, uh, assuming for the moment that the Supreme Court were to affirm, um, then any effect of a stay, if they granted it, uh, would only be in effect until they ruled on the case. So by next year, uh, you would have the hospitals uh, on the tax rolls and you would have the lower rate. Is there a scenario by which uh, the hospitals could pay in protest and that money would be so I may not get my terminology right here but uh, we have a uh, we have a levy we have a pot of tax money um, that is levied if the hospitals are included in that levy but pay in protest is it possible that is there is are there scenarios whereby that money would be in effect be not available to the taxing districts because it's paid in protest legally no um, some taxing districts including the city in the past or the township have held funds uh, I have not found any statutory requirement for doing that my position on it is in the past has been simply a matter of uh, fiscal management um, for some units of government the amount is very small uh, for some units of government such as school district the amount is very large and they may well reach different decisions as to how to handle it but I think it's a matter of their own fiscal management so that's a question of uh, whether or not the um, the taxing body decides to hold that money back that's uh, correct there's no requirement to hold the money back I have not found any such requirement. Okay, thank you. Okay, Eric. Um, have any other uh, public bodies or any organizations joined in on this appeal on either on one side or the other? I guess I'm really thinking about our state's attorney who filed a brief in the first case before the appeals court uh, has, have, has that office uh, gotten involved with this? Well, our state's attorney, as you know, in the appeal before the appellate court, he opposed the city. Yes, yes. Um, as did the attorney general. At this point in time, the state's attorney, to my knowledge, is not planning on uh, participating with the attorney general or with Carl. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they will participate on our side or not. They don't have to make that decision at this point in time. But will be uh, made soon. Carl has a right to appeal to the Supreme Court where a statute's held unconstitutional. So there's, I don't see any real question as to whether the court will take it under the rules. They take it. Uh, and then there is there are choices for each participant about what they want to file. They can stand on what they already filed. They can file a new brief. I think there are a total three choices they have. And they don't have to decide that yet. There will be a schedule sent out and then each participant can decide what it wants to do. I anticipate filing a new brief, which will be pretty much like the one we already filed, but have to see what other things uh, our opponents have to say in their briefs, which would be filed first. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Bill. Um, yeah, this may be getting a little bit ahead, but if um, assuming that the Supreme Court upholds um, the decision, 
then for the past two years, the tax bodies that have been receiving money up to their tax caps, they received their levy basically, but there would also be additional money owed by the hospitals. So the question is what happens to that additional money since they've already received their levy, should it go back to the taxpayers? Well, the best I can give you at the moment is an offhand opinion. I have done some research on it and haven't reached any final conclusion, but I believe that money would come to the taxing districts. What the taxing districts do with it, I think, is up to each taxing district. Uh, there is a procedure for rebating taxes. Um, that's something each taxing district could decide for itself. Again, for some taxing districts, uh, it is small enough that they probably don't want to spend any time or money finding out the answer to the question. That might cost more than they have at stake. Uh, for some, it's uh, very important uh, to be sure of exactly what their choices are and worth the time and expense of making sure. Isn't it true that thank there's, you. oh, are you finished yet? Just Is, isn't it true that um, there are other pots of tax money that would also have to be decided after the Supreme Court rules on this case? It's my Taxes opinion, Taxes for yes. pre previous years. Uh, we, if the Supreme Court affirms the appellate court, uh, we will go after taxes for all the years um, that the hospitals did not pay and were supposed to pay. And then that would go to the various taxing districts. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Fred? All right, thank you very much. Uh, there being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.